Hey guys, it's me, Kelly. Um, it's Tuesday morning. I'm actually home. Um, I was really sick yesterday and last night I kind of started getting sick again. Won't go into details. It's not nice. Anyways, um, I think I had like a touch of food poisoning from Sunday, possibly Saturday um, evening, but I'm pretty sure it's from Sunday night. Um, but yeah, Monday was, yesterday was awful. And then, um, last night it got a little bad, but I'm finally starting to feel better. Um, so I've already been sleeping a lot and it's like super storming here now. So if you hear a lot of lightning and thunder, that's what's going on. But I just wanted to do a really quick update because I have something from the mail and I've been working on stuff. So I just wanted to show you that. Um, so the first thing that I was working on this month was a Stitch in Time by Emma Congdon or Stitch Rovia. And I'm doing it on this really pretty 14 count fabric from Picture This Plus. I bought this a long time ago with this pattern in mind, actually. Um, but the fabric is called Baroque, B-A-R-Q-U-E, -R -R I believe. I don't know how to pronounce it properly, but that's how I've been saying it. But um, this is a stitch in time. It's the one that's a sewing machine that um, is made up of all kinds of words. It's not exactly the best printout because this is one of the last patterns that I got out of that magazine where they were like, oh, we can't really help you print that. And blah, blah. Anyways, if you want to know about that situation, it's one of my earlier videos. Just go way back in time. Um, but it's a sewing machine and it's made up of different words like silk, Ada, linen, um, thread, um, stitched with love, all kinds of things. Um, so incredibly cute. So this is, you know, the spool and the thread going through and this is the last two letters of Ada. So um, I made pretty decent progress on it, I think. I like the gray on it. I think that's going to look really nice. It's not a horrible um, stitch. I'm trying to remember which edition of this magazine it was in but it was from the cross stitcher but I don't remember which one to be honest at all and I don't have access to the pattern anymore because of the whole drama and controversy so if you want to know more about that please go watch that video um I just don't want to get into it again um the next thing that I worked on was my frosted pumpkin um SAL and I got the top finally finished so I got three billy goats gruff finished and I also got April and I got a little bit more done on the center motif but um, I just kind of got done with working with it to be quite honest so um, I finished all of that and him. So next month I'm going to do April, but it probably, since next month is mania, um, it'll probably be June whenever I focus on this center motif again a little bit more, but, um, it's coming along nicely and I like it a lot. The next one that I worked on was my Mermaid Lagoon. Oh, I forgot to put my needle minder back in there. The next one that I worked on was Mermaid Lagoon. This one's by Satsuma Street. It is stitched on a fabrics by LJ, and I don't remember the name of it, but this is whenever he, like, really first started. Um, so it's older. In the video that I talk about whenever I was going to start this, which was... probably last summer, so again, one of my earlier videos, um, I do say the fabric and the count. I can't remember the count now. The count is either 16 or 18, I know that for sure, but I feel like it's 18, but I'm honestly, I just can't remember. But 
Um, I finished her hair. So I did finish her hair. I finished her skin tone. Um, I finished the band around her torso. Started a little bit of the light green. I finished some of this seaweed around her body and then I finished this coral and then everything this direction. So I have three out of the six pages finished. I still have quite a ways to go. It's going to be about this tall. So I mean I do still have a pretty good chunk but to show you how much in comparison um, this is technically the pattern, but this is actually like the working pattern. It's huge. So on this smaller like front page one, that's how much I've done. I just wanted to kind of get an idea, but I do have three pages finished of this, which is really awesome. So I'm, I'm halfway done with that page wise anyways. I'm about... I would, I would fairly say about 35 to 40%. It's not bad. Um, it was stitching up a little bit faster um, this time. I think what really just, I was, the facial features and stuff just took me forever that that's why she got put away for so long. Um, but now that it's going a lot faster, I, I was enjoying it, but... I just decided I need to put this one away again for a little bit. So I'll probably pop her out again soon. Um, what I've been working on the last two days since I've been home sick, um, if I wasn't sleeping or in the bathroom, um, I was just sitting here stitching. So I got my February uh, motif done and I'm working on this month's just because I'm trying to bring down the border so I finished this part of the border and I got you know some of the board so I'm working on this section right here and then I'll work on March's um, motif to get um, where the bottom of the border goes and then I'll just slowly be working on this center motif um, on the top um, throughout. And then once there's, you know, one on this end, that's whenever I'll start bringing down the um, border on that side. So I love this so far. I did change almost every color in this pattern. A lot of people um, like the colors that I've chosen. Also, I mentioned this in my... Um, April plans video but the April block is full coverage I'm not going to do full coverage because I did pick um, you know a really colorful piece of fabric with this like yellowed marbling in it so I'm going to leave it because um, I don't know if you can tell but it's more yellow down here fades to white and then goes back up to yellow um, like a pale one so I'm going to leave that because, um, like I said in my last video, I picked fun fabric for a reason. So I'm not going to cover that up with full coverage. Now I am still going to do like the full coverage, like in the banners and things like that. But these full coverage pieces, I think if you're doing it on white, like in the main, um, in the main picture, then I think it's really, I think it looks really good because it adds, um, that splash of color in there but a lot of us are doing it on color fabric so I'm not going to add to that but these are the colors that I did pick so I did change out the two yellows um the cream I left the same um I left one of the grays the same the 3024 is the same. I left in the blues, the 3750 is the same, but I changed all the other ones and then I'm pretty sure I changed all the pinks. But this is my symbol guide. I rewrote it because not every month uses all the colors. So as of right now, the pattern has all of these symbols for these different color ranges. So these are the ones that I used. I'm just holding it up here because people have asked me and um, 
I know that I put it in the bottom of one of my videos, I think from the first one, but there were some colors that weren't out yet, and so I didn't put in the rest of my conversion. So as of the April pattern, these are all the colors used throughout the entire Cherry SAL, and the symbols, and what I chose. So if you do like, I know somebody said they like the blues that I picked or some of the pinks that I picked. So this is what this is showing it one more time. This is, this is what I picked. So, um, I did that for myself, but since it's sitting here, um, the other thing I got, I got this in the mail, pretty pink packaging. So, um, whenever this, oh, they have a pull tab to open it. Why do I need scissors? Because pull tabs break, apparently. Right. Got it. All right. So, I was talking to, I think, Heather and also Amanda, but, um, originally... I wasn't going to buy the pattern. The more sneak peeks at the release of it, I decided that I wanted the pattern. But whenever it first got released, oh, another cupcake. <laughs> I have so many cupcakes. Um, <laughs> it's adorable, but so many cupcakes. Seriously, get, I'm sorry you saw his butthole. All right. So once again, receipt with handwritten thank you. Um, got a thread organizer. I got my new needle minder. So he's so cute with little baking goods. And I did get the thread minder. How cute is it? So really nice and sturdy. I've never used one of these, but um, I will whenever I start this. So I did go ahead a couple days later. Stop chewing on my cord. I did a couple days later whenever they released a couple more sneak peeks. Maybe it was only one. Maybe it was two. I don't remember. But I saw two more photos. So, um... I went ahead and I bought the pattern. I had already purchased these though, so these were already coming to me. Um, but I went ahead and purchased it. It looks really, really, really cute. Um, but another reason is because I was gonna wait to see what the whole thing looked like. I got a better idea of what it was going to look like. Also, I was kind of afraid that um, if I waited till the end, you know, like each month you're getting a recipe card. And whereas I already know how to make some of these pies, some of them I probably don't. So it'd be kind of fun to have a recipe card for some new pies. Um, so I thought that'd be kind of cool. And I wasn't sure if um, you would get the recipe cards if you waited and bought all at the end and it just is really cute so I probably won't start it I off I definitely won't start it next month because I also don't know what fabric I want to do it on I want to wait and see a, a few months of it I think and decide which means I'll probably wait and get fabric for it in the Christmas in July sale from pictures plus which means I probably won't get it till like November or December so that's fine with me though. Um, that can be like an SAL that I do next year um, because that would also be kind of fun because then I would have a lot to catch up on, which um, is sometimes my favorite way to do an SAL actually because if you get like super into it, you know, you have a lot to work on. But um, that was it. I just wanted to do a really quick update because I kind of wanted to go take another nap, but I figured everything's sitting here. Um, might as well just go ahead and film it and 
do that. <laughs> they are a mess, these two. Um, so might as well go ahead and film that. So I just wanted to say hello, see how all y'all's, um, first week of the month has been, or first week and a half, I guess, of the month has been, and, um, just see what, what everyone has been up to. <laughs> Sorry, I like to mess with him. Um, other than that, that's all that I have this week. I will do a final update on where I finish with the charity SAL. Um, things that I still have planned for this month is Halloween Cat by Satsuma Street, um, National Parks by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, but I'm, I'm definitely waiting to do that one next week during like Earth Day and all that. Um, I'm also supposed to be working, he had this. Also supposed to be working on my giant Harry Potter this month, which I really want to do, but at the same time I keep getting distracted with other ones and I keep putting it off. So I'm not really sure if that one's, I don't know. We'll see. Like I said, I like having the structure, but at the same time, the last few months I've been kind of like, eh, and changing it up um, because I was supposed to work on it the days that I was working on Mermaid Lagoon. I'm actually supposed to be working on Mermaid Lagoon right now, but I didn't want to. So, um, anyways, I hope y'all have a great rest of the week and everyone is feeling good. Um, careful of what you eat, guys. Um, but yeah, anyways, I hope that everyone is doing fantastic. I will see y'all in about a week and a half or a week. I don't know. I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.